Hi, I'm Tom Brown. And I'm Ben Mankiewicz. I live here in L.A. And uh, really, no matter where you go, whether you're in Hollywood or whether you're in Beverly Hills, always the possibility that you're going to see a celebrity. Yeah. But if you're out here, you can't count on it. Well, you have to look quick. They're, they're very fast. <laughs> Coming up right here on Melrose Avenue, you've got the gates of Paramount Pictures, a very historic lot, the oldest working lot in Hollywood. Famous legend has it that when a struggling actor comes to Hollywood, the first thing he does is come to the gates at Paramount and you have your photograph taken right outside the gate. Part of it used to be RKO Studios that Howard Hughes owned. Right. And then uh, Desi Lu uh, took over in the 50s. They shot I Love Lucy there. Right. And Star Trek, my all-time favorite TV show, shot right there at Paramount. That's still right. very much an active lot. And always a possibility you're going to see a big time celebrity. Yeah. But you know, there is one place I can guarantee you celebrities galore. And that would be? That would be Hollywood Forever Cemetery. Yeah, maybe not yeah. the kind of celebrity sighting you were thinking of, but yeah. uh, nonetheless. Right. It's a guarantee, the, though. Some of the biggest names in classic Hollywood are there. And we got a great guide who's going to take us around the cemetery. Yeah, you're going to see stars. Hi, I'm Carrie Bible. I'm the historic tour guide here at the Hollywood Forever Cemetery. Hey, Carrie. Hi, and I will be glad to take you around. Great, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks yeah. for the map. Yeah. The cemetery was founded in 1899 originally on 100 acres of land. The most interesting chapter of the cemetery begins in 1939 when it was taken over by a former white collar criminal, Jules Roth. He, over the years, let the cemetery fall into extreme neglect. He embezzled a tremendous amount of money. He was very lax with security and let people run wild all around the cemetery. And it was basically falling apart really? and in a state of ruin by 1998, the year he died. Well, that same year, Tyler Cassidy came in and took over the cemetery. Yeah. He comes from a family of cemeterians in the Midwest. Didn't know that was a word, cemeterians. <laughs> Learn oh. something new every day. So he came out here and purchased this entire property for a mere $375,000. A whole cemetery, $375,000. entire cemetery. You can't buy a house in L.A. for $375,000. No, buy half a no. house. Yeah. And he was the only bid. If not for Tyler, this place would have been closed down and condemned and shut down by the state of California. Now, the cemetery has an interesting story, but the, uh, the map I'm looking at here of uh, some of the guests, residents, I don't really know <laughs> sure. what to call them, it's like a TCM lineup for an evening. We have so many incredible people here. We have Marion Davies. When she died, it was decided she would be buried under her original last name, which was Doris. In later years, a woman named Patricia Van Cleve was on her deathbed, and she told her son, I want you to tell the world that I am the daughter of Marion Davies and William Randolph Hearst. It turned out that actually was the truth. Patricia Van Cleve was raised as the beloved niece. However, she was, in fact, the daughter of Marion Davies and William Randolph Hearst and is buried in there with Marion. Can you tell us about uh, John Huston's marker? Because I'm a big fan of John Huston. John Huston's marker has a Celtic band in the middle of the grave and gold lettering around it. He gambled, drank, played cards, and had a very larger-than-life type of personality. I'm also a fan of his movies, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the movie is great right. filmmaker, right. by the way. Yeah. And people leave bottles of whiskey on his grave. In fact, the last, <laughs> last time I looked, there was a bottle of Bushman's whiskey sitting on ah. his grave. Sort of a, a tribute to an alcoholic. You, you, leave, him, <laughs> you leave him some whiskey. That's yeah, great. you know. <laughs> no, that is nice. Yeah, I like that. Tell us about Tyrone Power. It looks like it has an interesting marker. Tyrone Power's grave is actually my most favorite one in the cemetery from a stylistic point of view. His grave is actually a bench, and it's got a very Art Deco style that's very distinct. And it's very obvious that a tremendous amount of thought and care went into the design. Now, on the map, I'm seeing one of the big TCM names here. Cecil B. DeMille, the director, is here. Now, keep quiet and attend to your business. Cecil B. DeMille is here, and interestingly, his grave has a terrific view of the Paramount Water Tower, mm. which is so fitting because that's the company he helped to build and build as a name. It's not a humble little tombstone either for Cecil B. DeMille. It's DeMille, so of course there's nothing humble about it. One of the other very important people that's here, Rudolph Valentino. When Valentino died, he was 31 years old, and in his short lifetime, he spent money very, very lavishly. He was a Hollywood star. Exactly. So when he died, he was completely broke, huh. and there was no like a money. Hollywood star. Right. So June Mathis, the great silent film era screenwriter and producer, who had actually discovered Valentino, and she said, you know, we'll just put Valentino in one of my family crypts, and we'll figure out what to do later on. That seems really strange to me, that the guy who, who most people come to see here has such a modest grave. You think it would be something over the top, like DeMille or Fairbanks. 
Now, as big as the legend of Valentino is, and with it being the most visited grave here at Hollywood Forever, there's also the legend of the lady in black that I've read about. What's the legend? When he passed away, women were so shocked and so grief-stricken all over around the world. He had a real impact on women. A huge impact on women. There'd never been a movie star that was as sensual and exotic as Valentino, so he was a big, big deal. The Sheik. It's the Sheik. The Sheik. Yeah. So the year after he died, a woman showed up dressed head to toe in black with red roses, and she placed roses on the crypt. And she wouldn't say who she was, and she wouldn't tell people what her relationship to Valentino was. And naturally, it created a sense of mystery and a sense of who is this woman? Why is she here? What is her relationship to Valentino? Mm. So in 1941, she came forward. Oh, so she finally revealed her relationship. She finally revealed that she got sick as a little girl and was in the hospital. And the story goes that Valentino came to visit her in the hospital, bringing her a single red rose. And he told her that she was going to get better and that she would probably outlive him. And all that he wanted was for her to remember him. You appear to be a, a lady in black. I decided to sort of take up the mantle, if you will, about three years ago. My reasons are a little different from my predecessors. I love silent films so much, and I love Valentino. And for me, this is just a way to celebrate that and a way to make it interesting for a whole new generation of people. Do you swoon over Valentino? I don't swoon. I sort of consider myself more the historian, lady in black. <laughs> Non-swooning. 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 Yeah. Leave it to a guy like DeMille to make a big production out of dying. <laughs> you know how you can tell it's a cemetery in Hollywood? What's that? Oh, yeah. They have a gift shop. <laughs> Caps and t-shirts available. Very classy. Yeah.